Hello everyone, Mimikins here. Today I'm going to share with you my top 3 Switch axes and builds to go with them. I play on PS4 but I've also tried to include a PC version of the builds just so you guys don't feel too left out. I know you guys have called Tarith at the moment. I really recommend farming her gear. Not only does she have decent armour set but got some nice weapons also. It was really hard picking 3 weapons since there's a lot of Switch axes I really like. So I decided to pick ones that offer something a little different from each other, but are all very good in their own way. First up we have Devil Joe's Terra Tyrannos. I like this weapon, not only does it hit hard, but it comes with Elder Seal High, which helps when fighting Elders, both to make them flinch more and help reduce their auras. Ever wondered why in some fights Teostra spams Supernova and has Blast Dust everywhere, and others are much cleaner? This is because of Elder Seal. I find this very useful for solo and random SOS groups who may be at risk of fainting from Elder Super Attacks. This is my go-to build for damage dealing. I prefer this over the Tarth Axe Horn simply because I can cap out Affinity, Critical Boost and White Sharpness while keeping the set bonus for Master's Touch. That's without using the Affinity Booster. Tarathax Horn has huge damage potential if you run organised groups and rotate affinity boosters to maintain the effect, but if you want a build that doesn't rely on other people for damage, this is certainly a favourite that will deal consistently good damage with the bonus of Elder Seal. PC players, if you want to build a Devil Joe Switch Axe, here's a build for you. I've updated it with all the Cove armours which have just been added. Since you guys don't have the behemoth armor from Master Touch, I've added protective polish to extend the duration of the white sharpness bar. This build has 90% affinity with one affinity augment. Just remember, if you augment with affinity again, you will only gain 5%, so you may prefer another augment, especially when later down the road you'll gain access to more armors. Next up, I have the sticks. This weapon doesn't deal as much physical damage as the Terra Tyrannos, but the thing I do love about this weapon is you can do a whole hunt without having to sharpen your weapon at all. This weapon is very flexible for builds and feels good to play. I recommend Health Region Augment to allow for more aggressive gameplay and keeping on top of peak performance. I've paired Razor Sharp with Master's Touch to be unstoppable. The Blast is a nice bonus, but it could be swapped if you want for extra survivability or utility skills. Same with the Attack Charm, popping an extra health and recovery up to strengthen all your health region gains from the Augment makes a very survivalistic, aggressive set. You can squeeze in additional skills like earplugs in without losing your key skills also. Personally, I love this weapon and its versatility, and that's why it's in my top 3. I'm really sorry PC players, but this weapon hasn't been added to your game yet. But if Capcom keep following their usual pattern, Lunastra will be the next monster to be added, so hopefully you won't have to wait too long. My final weapon has to be Dutarth Axe Paralysis. This weapon again doesn't do the highest damage per hit, but procs paralyze often. It makes fights much easier. I like how it allows for bursts of DPS as well as targeting specific body parts to break off when the monster is paralysed. It activates more in single player but is still very potent in multiplayer since it will allow your whole group to burst down a monster. This weapon only has blue sharpness and does need unlocking to release its full potential but it's totally worth it. I've made two builds for it, one using Zora set bonus for critical status and the other using the behemoth armor for master's touch. The critical status was noticeable, but in order to gain the set bonus I've got some useless skills in, such as blast. I also felt I needed to sharpen more often since this weapon has blue sharpness and reaching green I was starting to have reduced damage and bouncing in axe mode. If I had a Mind's Eye Jewel, I would probably slot it in. I know in Blade Farm it has Mind's Eye built into the attack, so it's a nice bonus but not a necessity. So switching up to the Behemoth set instead, I noticed a DPS increase since I was able to slot skills in I wanted, and also far less sharpening. I enjoyed this build the most as I felt I was able to make the most of my blue sharpness, while the monster was paralysed and overall had faster runs. PC players also now have access to this weapon, so here's how I'd build for PC. Zora Magdoros Critical Status are a more offensive build. If you haven't been lucky on Cove, 
there is a similar crafted weapon called the Barath Grinder. You can use this with the same sets, which will give you paralysis build up on all your attacks. However, if you don't unlock it with free element, you will still gain paralysis build up but on your sword hits only, and this could allow you to add in extra skills. Everyone should have access to the Cult Tower Siege at the moment, I'll pop the event schedules in the description for those viewing the video at a later date. There are lots of nice weapons to collect, so I'll be back farming it a lot. You know you've done too much cult when you start dreaming about her. That's my top 3 switch axes and why I like them. Thanks for watching, please support the channel by liking and subscribing and I'll see you next time.